You're right, Harris. We are all over that Dow, but one of the contributors might have just been this, because it's not supposed to happen. A Spanish nurse catching Ebola after caring for a patient with it. She's the first person to contract the disease without stepping foot in Africa. Meantime, the World Health Organization now warning the spread of the disease across Europe now appears unavoidable. And that's raising big worries for healthcare workers here. Busy news day. Welcome, everybody. I'm Neil Cavuto. And it is not just healthcare workers. Word today that some of those 3,000 U.S. troops being sent to Ebola ravaged countries will be handling blood samples and other raw materials while stationed there. Cardiologist Dr. Kevin Campbell says that is a concern. Why, doctor? Well, you know, when you take troops into these endemic areas, they are going to come in contact with people who may have been exposed and also these body fluids. And not all the troops are going to be trained in handling these potentially very infectious materials. And I worry very much for their safety. You know, when we have the CDC saying, doctor, that the number of cases is ebbing, or in other words, not accelerating at the rate it was in Africa, and that is a, a good sign, do you think that is the case, or do you think that now this is spreading beyond Africa, and it's that leap that could be a worry? I'm more worried about the spread beyond Africa. If you look at the World Health Organization, they are predicting nearly 1.4 million cases of Ebola before this is over. So I've, I'm very concerned about this. The CDC's news conference today really said nothing about what we were actually going to do to help prevent the spread beyond Africa. You know, when I was speaking to the CDC director yesterday, I mean, he more or less telegraphed that some actions were imminent but didn't specify a one. Uh, just that uh, I could rest assured that actions were coming. That did not inspire a lot of confidence. Um, do you have confidence in our ability to deal with this? Right now, I, my confidence is waning because of the fact that we were supposedly equipped to handle this. And then in Texas, we have a patient come to the emergency room with symptoms, with travel history, and is sent home and then subsequently infects or exposes potentially hundreds. So my confidence is not high. I am tired of all the rhetoric. I think it's time for action, actually put a plan in place. Would that plan include restricting uh, travel to and from the region of Africa? I think it absolutely has to. I think that we should quarantine for 21 days anyone from that region who wants to come to the U.S. prior to coming to make sure they are not exposed and having symptoms. On the other hand, we need to have a team of people in place on the back end to double ensure that they don't enter the U.S. through other routes. This is a major concern, and I think the CDC and the president are downplaying it. You know, the argument against doing that, doctors, I'm sure you heard a million times in the CDC director was relaying to me just yesterday is that um, you limit the availability of, uh, of qualified personnel to make it to Liberia, to Rhodesia, some of these other countries and deal with this problem, thereby almost guaranteeing it's spreading rapidly. What do you say to that? You know, I think that we can still have volunteers go there under the auspices of caring for these patients, but they need to understand they have to experience a 21-day quarantine before coming. I think that we've continued to talk about what we might do and what we could do rather than doing something, and that's why the epidemic is where it is right now. All right, doctor, thank you very, very much. We appreciate it. Thanks All for right, having so me.